Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon, good morning, and good night for some people. Hope everybody's day is wonderful. It is two. Whoa, that's loud. It's Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. A new day, a new start, a new slate. Whatever happened in that word called yesterday, erase it. It doesn't matter. It's all about the now. What's happening now? How are you feeling now? Not how you felt yesterday. So, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff I want to talk about today, family. A lot of stuff. Um, I don't even know where to start. Where should I start? It's just so much. So much was coming in the last couple of days. Um, but I had to be obedient and honor my body in not going live at that time because I was just chilling out, relaxing, but everything was just coming in. I was like, but I got to get it out. It was like, nah, it's not time yet. So um, where should I start? Let's talk about, and some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about is going to be stuff that I have said before. It's going to be repeated um, because this is something that we really have to embrace and something that we we have to come into, so I'm going to repeat it again. So let's go ahead and let's talk about the inner child, um, embracing your inner child and being childlike. Um, what I have noticed when I'm hanging with my sisters, because it's deeper than just sisterhood, what, what I notice is that we're so childlike in that moment. You know, we're in the middle of the forest, you know, everybody has their um, crystal books or their crystals or their singing bowls or, you know, whatever, whatever they have to bring to the table, they bring it to the table. And, you know, we're running around, we're playing, we got bubbles going. We are in our purest form, not worrying about tomorrow, not worrying about bills, not worried about uh, moving, not worried about houses, not worried about nothing. We were in our purest form. Um, no judgment, no nothing, just childlike. Um, we didn't even want to leave each other. It was like, um, you know, it was like when you, it brought me back to when you was little, when your friends would come over, your, your, uh, your friends would come over for sleepovers to come over. And um, you never wanted them to leave. You always would have like the stank face, like, you know. Like, um, you know, you didn't want them to leave, even the, even the fellas too, you know, you didn't want your, your little, your little friends to leave. Even when it came to like spending the night, sleepovers were so fun. We have to get back into that. Having sleepovers, inviting your girls over, playing games, being in that childlike state, not worried about your light bill or your water bill or the messed up relationship you're in at that moment. You know what I mean? Just being in pure bliss. And so now I'm going to open up a little bit and tell you a little bit about me, a a little bit more uh, deeper about me. Like what I learned also on this journey about about being about being like celibate in the way I say that in a way because I actually like broke that like maybe like two months ago or something like that. So but what I noticed is that. um. I was a very high sexual person. Um, I have very strong sexual energy. So for me, back in the day, sex was like breathing or eating. And I still think it's it's very much important for you to feed your sexual desire just as much as you eat and you do drink. But I wasn't using my sexual energy. And um, I would say like, uh, I I I wasn't using it in a negative way, but I wasn't using it in its highest potential like I should have been using it. So what started to happen was um, I, I went celibate and I started to suppress my um, sexual energy. Good and a bad thing. There's no good and there's no bad, I would say. There's diff- all different type of aspects of it. But what it did for me was it helped me experience intimacy without the sexuality or se- sexism behind it. I was able to tap more into my inner child and wants to call and text when I'm on here. Um, But it it gave me the opportunity to 
experience intimacy without the sexual factor, being able to um, love and hug and kiss and be in people, be on people without any agenda. Um, as we did when we were children, we slept with each other in the same bed. We loved on each other. We kissed each other without any type of agenda, no judgment, just being pure hearted and in the pure state, just going with the flow. So I know I had to go through that and still going through it to learn more about being more intimate without the sexually, the sexual tendencies or traits being behind it. So the more we drop these labels and these um, perspectives or these, these, these moral codes um, that society puts a standard on for us, we think we have to be that way. We have to be that way because the media, because the government said that. The more we drop these things, the lighter our heart gets, the less the judgment comes, the more you become childlike. Also, what I've been experiencing is eating with my hands, not using forks and spoons anymore, just connecting with the food and eating with my hands. Pay attention to your children. Learn from them. They're trying to show you the way. Children don't want to eat with forks and spoons. It's us that pushes them to do it because our parents or because society has told us that I guess it's improper or it's unfit or it's barbaric to do that. But kids already know what to do. They want to connect with their food. Mindful eating. We need to get back into mindful eating. Me, myself, I'm guilty of it. I won't have my first meal until, you know, one, two, three, four o'clock. By that time, I'm ready. I'm ready to eat. So when I'm eating my food, I'm just, you know, just, I'm just cookie monster, just putting it in there. I'm not being mindful of it. So I'm trying to bring that in more to be mindful of what I'm eating, putting the food in my mouth, chewing it. How does it feel when I chew it? How does my body feel when I'm chewing it? Examine the texture, roll the food around your mouth, feel it. Be mindful of what's going on. Be mindful of how your fingers feel, how your tongue feels, how your lips feel when you take on the food. So, um. Another way with, with um, reaching more into your inner child is cleaning up the inner child boo-boos, knowing that you are not your childhood. Whatever happened to you happened for a reason. Nothing just happens just because. You have to use that Jedi mind frame and find a bit of good in every bit of what we call bad. There's always a good in something. There's always a quote-unquote bad. It's just the flow. The flow may act different on this side. The flow may act different on that side. But becoming that flow and knowing whatever happened to you in your childhood got you to where you are now and still getting you there. We have to release and let go of the childhood traumas because it happened. So what you going to do now? It happened 15, 10, 20, 10 years ago, or even if some stuff has just happened recently. It has already happened. Why are you still holding on to it? Get the lesson from it and move on so you can embrace that inner child. Drop the labels. When you drop the labels, you're breaking, you're breaking these matrix codes. They don't like it when you, when you just break it, break it free. Another thing is we're going to need to break these, these, these codes because when we start living in these villages together and you got people who still holding on to uh, labels or moral codes or uh, 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 why she looking at my man, this is my man, this is mine, mine, mine. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to stir up conflict in the village. If you're, if, you're, if you're holding on to your partner like it's a possession or a prize, that person, has that's their vessel. That's their body. What they choose to do is what they choose to do. But we have to come into this community living open-minded. In the community that I'm building, clothes is optional. We can't have people stealing their lower chakras, um, 
Oh, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with sex. There's nothing wrong with it. I don't think shit sex should be categorized, categorized in the lower chakras, but when it does, when it is in the lower chakras is when you're so, how can I put it? When you're not seeing the sex for a spiritual value, you're more into the materialistic listic of the sex. So if people are walking around naked in the village, we can't have people, you know, um, you know, uh, he can't, or she's naked. I don't feel comfortable with that with my husband and whoop de whoop de whoop. We have to be able to be free and live free, live like children, no judgment, no responsibilities to a certain extent. We have to get in our practices. We have to do our rituals. We have to do our ceremonies. We have to still deprogram, but we have to be in our purest form where we're not stressed out about this crazy, stupid stuff. That we'll be stressed out about. It don't even matter. We have to drop these labels because love doesn't have a label. Whoever you choose to love or to flow with, whether it be woman or man, let it be. Flow with that. Maybe you have to learn something from that situation. Maybe it's something you suppressed in yourself from a um, a past life before you didn't get to experience it because you suppressed it because of labels and because of society telling you certain things that you can and cannot do. Well, express it this tight lifetime around. If you don't like it, jump off the flow. The flow is always going. You can jump in, ride the wave, and jump back off when you want to. So we need to drop these labels. When we're dropping the labels, we are able to live in harmony more. There's no judgment. There's no, ooh, he's like that. Ooh, she's like that. Ooh, he's like that. Why is she looking at him because he's naked? We got to drop all of that, y'all. We have to drop all of that. We also have to drop people that are not on our vibration anymore. Let go of it. I see it too much. I see it every day. I see relationships trying to hold on through a thimble from a, from a thread just because some moral code or some commitment or some vow that you vowed yourself to be with this person through thick and thin and whatever 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 the whole thing is i'm not sure but it is nothing wrong with breaking the vows if you and that person not rocking no more you guys are just not rocking learn the lesson that you had to learn from the situation and keep it moving we are in the next phase we don't need nothing to stand in our way nothing no one no place no job if you don't like your job leave now we're going to bring it into the next phase money is soon to fade away your countless dollars that you're just stacking up and stacking up in your savings account stacking up in your savings account is going to be worthless we're going to be put on a card with rations. You get everything rationed, especially with all this uh, martial law and everything coming out. Cash is dying. The American U.S. dollar is dying. They want to be able to keep tabs on us more and more, so they'll create a card. This card, you can think of it as a show-me card. Many movies have shown us this. Back to the Future. Um... I can't think of the other card, but it's called a show me card. They're like, where's your show me? That show me is going to have your ID card, your money, your gas rations, all of that. Take your money that you've been saving and invest into things. Buy land. Buy solar panels. Buy water fil uh, fil filterization um, uh, machines. Use the money. Stop letting it sit up there because there's going to be a time where we can't even use the money no more. The money is fading away slowly but surely. You may not see it so much, but it is. Take your money. If, Like I always say, and I got to say it again, if you got $2,000 in your savings, your grandmama got $2,000, your sister only got $500, come together with that money and buy land live off the land stop complaining about your job that you don't like if you don't like it leave the next step is having faith 
having faith, having faith, we'll be so quick to be like, well, I'm the creator of my uh, reality. I manifest what I want in my reality. My reality is I'm the magician this. Well, it's time to put those words to the test. Live off grid without the security and know that the security shall come. We have to detach from this government. We can't be on Social Security our whole life. We can't be on VA disability checks our whole life. We can't be on retirement checks our whole life. All of that stuff is going to stop. They're going to stop that money coming to us. I get money from them too. I'm going to have to do what I have to do with my money too. And keep saving it up to this one point until I get this land. Because they're going to cut the money off. They're going to cut the child support off. All that stuff is going to be off. What you going to do then? You're not self-sustainable. So what you going to do? Things is going to get crazy here in the USA. It's already did. You think people just dying right now? Things are about to get crazy. I've seen a vision. The reason why I stopped doing most of my videos and teaching little tricks for magic and stuff like that is because everybody's not ready for it. What I practice is in my coven. And behind closed doors. Because I seen a big great war coming. And some of people who are on these lower vibrational energies. And some people are high vibrational energies that don't know how to take this power. It's going to be chaotic. People right now are getting together doing rituals for certain things. And certain that energy not even high enough. You guys are bringing in chaos. You're bringing in storms. You're bringing in all kind of chaotic stuff right now because you don't know what you're doing. So it's about to get crazy. It's about to get crazy because people are waking up to their abilities. They're waking up to the power within them. And some people don't know how to what to do with that power and what to do with those abilities. So it's about to get a little bit crazy. I can understand in a certain sense why they would have the martial law because they know what's coming. They know the great awakening has been done. They know that the abilities are starting to come out. They know what's going to happen. I mean, really think about it. If everybody start popping off with this magic and this elemental magic and start controlling the wind, the water, the fire, and the earth, imagine the, that power getting the wrong people's hands. What's going to happen here on this, on this earth realm? It's going to be chaotic. The money is going to fade away. People who are not being self-sufficient or are not growing their food or trying to come together and do an urban garden in their community, everybody's going to get crazy. The looting, the, the, the tearing the stuff up. It's about to get wild, family. And I don't say this to scare you. I don't say this to promote fear. I'm telling you what's to come and to prepare yourself and to brace yourself and see if you want to be in the USA during this time. I don't know when it shall come, but I feel my spirit telling me that it's time for me to get ready to venture out and go check this land out and don't be choicy about where the land's going to be. The three top places on my list is Belize, Honduras, and Panama. Uh, Honduras, Belize, and Panama are the top three things on my list. I'm going to need doctors. I'm going to need teachers. I'm going to need herbalists, gardeners, environmental scientists, clothing designers. But when we do our rituals, we need to start communicating and getting together with people like that so we can breed, bring our trades together. Next thing is internet. Internet is being, has always been watched and censored, but President Obama just signed over something where um, the internet is being censored by a third party, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not too sure because I don't um, stay um, much up on the politics and news and what's, what's going on, but I did see something about that. So with that being said, there's going to be certain um information that you're not going to be able to access on the internet anymore it's time to get to the ancestors it's time to ask them what's going on what i would suggest you do is 
any videos, any information that you want that you, you know, you just don't have the time to get to, but you want to get to it, save it on a hard drive. Save it now. Save it now. Sit down one day and just go through all the videos, all the information on chakras, on kundalini energy, on candle magic, on elemental magic, on grounding, on chanting, all of that. Take it and save it on a hard drive. This is the information age, and they know it's the information age, so they're going to start cutting information. So save it all. Next thing, we're not going to always be operating on this internet. We're not. We can't survive on this internet. I know we get so used to it, and I'm even I'm guilty of it. Let me just hop online real quick and Google this and see what this. No, we need to stop tapping into the ancestors for the answers. So now it brings me into this. <clears throat> a while ago, I made a post about, um, I wonder what the government is doing with all the energy that they're harvesting with all of these shootings. Now, this is what I want you guys to know. Stop feeding in to all of these shootings. I'm not saying that they're not real. Some are real. Some are fake. You have to mix the truth with a lie to keep the people going. One thing you have to realize is that we all have a divine mission and a divine purpose on this life, on this on this earth. How do you know or do not know that whoever got shot in these shootings, that was their purpose? They came down here to get shot on March the 15th, 2008 or 2015 by a white car. How do you know, how do you know that they didn't choose that when you're getting all wound up and all macho, having all that energy harvest up so they can take it? And I'm going to tell you what they're doing to it. I'm going to tell you in a minute. But why we don't start marching when a blood shoots a crip or a crip shoots a blood or a vice lord or when a black person shoots another black person? Why you ain't marching about that? Huh? Why ain't nobody marching about that? Some black guy just shot a black innocent child. Why y'all not marching about that? Why y'all not televising about that? Why y'all not getting all angry about that? Because you in the spell. You in the spell. You in the spell of the white man this, the white man that. Let's hate the white man. I'm not saying that it's not wrong for these white cops doing this. What I'm saying is white cops have been shooting people every day for years. For years. You want to march now? You want to get mad now? You want to Black Lives Matters now? What about then? You've fallen into the spell. You've fallen into the spell. They're advertising it and promoting it now so they can harvest your energy. Why didn't he do it 10 years ago when a white cop killed somebody 10 years ago? You so mad talking about the white man killing us when you eating fried chicken and Popeyes. You eating McDonald's. You eating fat back. You eating pork. You eating ribs. You eating bacon. You killing yourself just like the white man is killing you. So stop blaming the white man and get on your shit. Stop blaming the white man and get on your shit. You killing him, you killing yourself just as much as he killing you. Why you ain't marching about that? Why you ain't calling the town hall meeting about that? About all the stuff that we eating and killing our bodies with. Why you ain't doing no town hall meeting about that? Huh? Because you in a spell. You are in a spell. And they are harvesting your energy. And I'm going to tell you how they harvest it in a minute. And I got to keep on going because feel the ancestors coming through and they's just pissed off with this it's a disgrace going out there tearing up shit acting all uncivilized don't make no sense but gotta sacrifice the few for the many just like in the army you got your frontline soldiers and you got your sisters your soldiers that don't go to war for all y'all people out there hooting and hollering and giving all your energy we're sacrificing y'all to save the many. If that's what y'all want to do, that's what y'all want to do. But just really think about it. Nobody's marching when another black person kills another black person. Nobody's marching 
when we got black people in our own black communities and neighborhoods selling drugs to each other. But y'all ain't marching for that. I ain't getting all mad for that. Y'all not calling everybody together to do a black moon ritual or a full moon ritual to stop the violence in our own community with the black on black lives. Y'all ain't doing that. But y'all do it when y'all hear something about a white man coming in because y'all love to feed the white man y'all energy. I love to do it. They know it. They two steps ahead of you guys. They are two steps ahead of you guys. They know if they televise that a white cop killed a black person or a black person killed a white cop, they know people are going to get furious. They want to divide us. I'm not saying white and black people got to live together and tribe, but we have to come together because we in the same fight. We have to kill that hate with love. Watch the spells you doing too. Because if you doing spells to get back at the white person and to harm harm white people, that shit going to fall back onto you. And you're going to be harming yourself and us because you want to you want to you want to do a spell on the white man. Get real. New paradigm. Time to shift. All white people are not the same. All white people are not harsh. Some white people are not even white. So, I'm going to bring it in. So, if you study the Kabbalah tree, there's certain, I wish I had a, a, a diagram of the Kabbalah tree. I didn't have time to draw it or anything. We are in Mount Kuf, the bottom of the Kabbalah tree. There's seven layers to that, to this dimension. The seven layers. When you make it out this seven layer, you can make it to you said, which right above the Kabbalah, the, the Makuf, you said, right there, it's a little circle right here. So what happens is some of us are not able to remember our dreams and to astral travel and astral project because we don't have enough energy to do it. We don't have enough energy to move it through the, um, to move through these dimensions into these realities. These dimensions are inner dimensions on top of dimensions. They're just vibration and frequency. That's all it is. It's inner dimensions in this dimension. So what happens is when we give praise to uh, Oshun, Ogun, Obafala, Kwan Yin, Dambalaya, Baba Legba, all these deities that we give offerings and energy to fills them up so they can move along the Kabbalah tree. It's all about energy. The se- we need to start feeding our ancestors, our great grandma, our grandma, our mama, our daddy, our great grandpa, our uncles, our sisters, our cousins. Let's start feeding them. Because the more we give offerings to them and the more stronger we make our ancestors, the stronger we get the stronger our ancestors can move up the Kabbalah tree and be able to work on different dimensions, they give the answers and the power to you too. It's teamwork. We are working together. The more we feed our ancestors, the more they feed us. The more we can get messages from the ancestors, the more they can travel through. Feed your ancestors. Give the energy and power to them. I'm not saying you ain't gotta have, you ain't gotta give uh power to Oshun and Papa Legba and all of them because they helping you out too. While you feeding them, they helping you out too. As they help you out, you move along the Kabbalah tree. You are able to hit the fifth, sixth, and seventh dimension. You are able to leave the Mount Kuf of the Kabbalah tree and branch off. There's many branches to the Kampala tree to make it to the one at the top. It's up to you which way you want to go. But know that some of us, even me, I had the elder tell me that the ancestors are hungry and we are not feeding them. But the more I start to acknowledge my ancestors and call their names in my chants and call their names in my prayers, 
I feel them tap more and more to other dimensions and able to give me the messages. We can't rely on Facebook and the news. We have to start tapping into other dimensions to get the real answers, to get the answers from the ancestors. The ancestors know they are there in the unseen realm. They can help us and we can help them. We can give them what they physically been wanting. They want a cigarette sometimes. Although the cigarettes might have killed them, they still want the cigarette. They want the fat back. They want the collard greens. They want you to dance. They want you to do these things. I light a cigarette for my grandma and my grandpa, and I blow the smoke out for them. I don't like to take it in my lungs, and I tell them that, look, grandpa, grandma, I can't take all this cigarette, this smoke in my lungs, but I blow it out to you, and they're happy just for that. Now, what is the government harvesting our energy from all of these police brutalities, all this hate, they're feeding certain deities too. They are feeding deities so their deities can move it up on the Kambala tree. All that energy they're taking from us, they're helping their deities move along the Kambala tree. And therefore, those deities are helping them, giving them our knowledge, giving them our rituals, in our ceremonies, that's what they're doing. They're feeding those deities. Now, all your ancestors you can trust. Some ancestors just want to suck you dry. They don't care about you. Some of your ancestors is helping them, giving them the rites of passage, giving them the rituals, telling them the ceremony, letting them know our knowledge. The more they feed them, the more the government's being fed. But the thing is, we're not going to let that happen. They're in panic mode right now. They're throwing all of their cards out. They're just killing people left and right. They don't know what to do. They're so scared. They're throwing all of their cards in to keep you distracted because they know this is the time when we really should end our shit. It's time for us to take periods of solitude. If your job is stopping you, stop the job and know and trust and believe and have faith that what you want to manifest shall come. It shall. Ask and you shall receive. But the trick is when you ask, let it go out and don't let doubt creep in because doubt messes up some of the things we can't even manifest. You'd be like, well, I'm doing the rituals and I'm doing my spells and I just can't seem to manifest nothing. Because somewhere you put doubt in it. Somewhere you let doubt creep in. Another thing is, if you know, be true to yourself. If you know that your vibration is not vibrating where it should be, stop asking for spells and, and stuff to do. Well, how can I do a spell for this? How can, you're going to fuck around. And you're going to do a spell with your low energy and your low vibration and attract low situations and low vibrations to you. Before you start getting into these rituals or prosperity, I need money, I need this, my house is about to get, but all this, get your energy right. Still eat uh, McDonald's and fat back and chitlins. Talking about you want to spell for something. Your damn energy is low. Get your shit right. The time is now. Ancestors is furious. Get the stuff done. Release what you need to release. Let go of the things that's holding you back from what you really want. It's insane to hold on because you want to help them out or because you love them. True love is letting them go and letting them deal with their problems while you deal with yours. That's true love. Just because you've been married for 25, 10, 15, 28, 9 years, whatever, don't let that stop you. If you need to detach from a relationship, detach from it. Stop making up excuses. There's so many powerful brothers and sisters out there, and I see y'all holding on to relationships 
that no longer serve your higher good, but you just keep on holding on to it. Stop that. We need you. We need each other. Money's fading away. Stop saving that money. Get the money. Buy you a cabin somewhere. You don't want to leave this country. You don't have to leave. But take that money. Buy you a cabin somewhere. Go to the center. Homeschool your kids. They're throwing everything at us. The vaccines, the food, everything, y'all. Wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up! Break the spell. Pull the power down. Bring the power down from the astral realm and from the other dimensions. Bring the power down from your ancestors into your vessel. Learn the elements. Whatever sign you are, whether you're a water sign, fire sign, earth sign, uh, air sign, start working with those elements to manifest what you want okay work with the elements work with water these elements is nothing but thoughts things creations and, and, and stuff in motion and making it happen study the elements i'm still learning the elements i can't tell you much about the elements but i know it's starting to click and it's starting to make sense we do it every day when we manifest stuff we're using the elements whether we know it or not we're using the elements, whether we know it or not. So study the elements, watch the cartoon, the avatar, your last airbender. That'll really help you out with the elements, help you out with chakras. It's something good for your children to watch. Put down that damn SpongeBob and all this crazy stuff y'all got y'all kids watching. Because y'all busy or because y'all got to work. Sit down and spend quality time with your kids. Stop putting behind video games and shows to keep them entertained. That's all I really wanted to share with you. There's agents out there. As I said before, I made a post. I was guilty of it. Don't post every everything. Don't post every picture you take with your sisters, with your brothers, and y'all doing a ritual, y'all doing a ceremony. They're watching. So come on over there and be smart. Read the art of war. Read the art of war. You can live peaceful and all of that. I live peaceful and all of that. But know that there's forces out there to take your energy. Know how the enemy works. Know the next step so you won't get left behind. So watch what you post online. Watch who you friend. Watch. Examine their page. See what they got on their page. See what they talk about. Anytime spirit tell me something ain't right with somebody, I cut in. Cut them. Cut them. Cut them out. Don't ask any questions. I cut them out. Trust your intuition. It never fails you. Be childlike. Be intimate. Hug. Kiss each other. Rub each other. Have cuddle weekends when your friends come over and y'all just cuddle. Sweat. I'm, I'm out here in the park parking lot. I'm about to go enjoy myself. I'm about to relax. Like I just gave a lot of energy back. Just even though sometimes y'all just need to pop and relax. Enjoy every moment of your life. Know every moment of your life is divine. Find something in it to enrich your life and enhance. Embrace the moon for the rest of your life. Embrace the sun for the sun. Embrace the earth surrounding you in. And also, embrace the fire in your life. I love you all. I love you all. Watch down. Come back on with another live video. Until next time.